and storytelling. Let's take a look at this. Sometimes when it rains, sometimes when it rains, I smile to myself and I think of times when as a child I'd run into the rain playing When we like grow up, I'll grow up tomorrow. When we like grow up, I'll grow up tomorrow. Sometimes when it rains, I think of times when I used to watch people and wonder why do they need clothes? They get wet, you know. Well, that's the natural pair when he was, she was performing some years ago in Deb and there at some poetry festival. Let's talk to the woman herself. She's joining us now live from our studios in Deb. Sister Lina, good morning and thank you very much for the time you're giving us this morning. Sawana, Sawana, good morning to you. How are you doing? No, I'm fine. I just want to know. I mean, it is Women's Month and we just want to touch base with you. What are you up to nowadays? <laughs> <laughs> what am I up to? I'm based in Durban and I'm loving it here. It was one of the best decisions I made to come back uh, to, to my hometown. I am um, working a lot with um, our literacy campaign that is called Nozi Nwa, the mother of books. We started in 2001. Yeah, yesterday we visited three schools. It was hectic. I was exhausted by the time I got home. We donate books to schools. We encourage young people to read and also set up new libraries when we can. We get donations from all kinds of people. But also Women's Month uh, to, to us has been amazing at the Playhouse Theatre. I was one of the um, women who performed uh, uh, on the 3rd of August, which was a big Women's Day poetry day. And um, with uh, people like Dr. Cindy Wemagona, Malika Ndlovu, Lebu Mashile, Naima. So it was a wonderful, wonderful day. And the, of course, the open mic to hear what young people are saying, what they are thinking, what they are writing about is one of my best parts to sit in the audience and be still. It is and so, then this it is past week we had uh, the women's dialogue and that was also amazing to talk about different topics that affect women in South Africa today in spite of saying it is women's month, uh, it is a, a democracy where women are free and what, but there are some e little issues there that, that rub us the wrong way, you know, so we have to deal with that. It is so pleasing to see and hear you got still so much energy after going in for so many years reading stories to us young and old in South Africa with your poet as we just saw in that clip. What's your advice to young women in South Africa today who want to pursue a life in arts and culture because it's not easy. For young women who want to pursue the, this career in the arts in South Africa, I would say if it's really your dream, it's something that you say you can't live without, go for it. Work as hard as you can. It's not going to be easy at all, but go for it. I also think um, if you can get an education, get training in, in all possibilities, uh, maybe you want to also focus in arts management. We need people who understand this thing called money. <laughs> we need people who can act, we need people who can design sets, we need people who can do lighting. All of those things are very, very important. Directors, script writers, and I would say focus on what you think is, is your strong point and do the very best that you can. I just recall a few years ago here in South Africa in particular where there were issues around the support that uh, people like yourselves in the world of arts and culture are getting from the government, Department of Arts and Culture, for example, and uh, the, from the private sector. Have things changed in your experience now? Do you find yourself being supported, particularly as a female performer? I think um, the, 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 the support uh, from the government or from the private sector is always yo-yoing, you know. You, you cannot say, no, there's no support. You can't say, yes, we're happy there's, there's more support. It's always uh, up and down, like um, the waves of the ocean, maybe, maybe like the way the, the financial uh, um, uh, uh, trends are going in the world. We are affected just as much as any other business. I would also say one has got to be wise in the way that you, you, you carry yourself in the arts, and many times uh, you, you get hired because of word of support, of word of mouth in people hearing that this person takes themselves seriously. This, just think little things like being punctual. Little things like showing up when you said you're going to show up. Little things like when the program doesn't go according to the way you want it to go and little changes or what you were told. Move it. Change. Adapt. And so I, I, I think that's extremely important for us to be ready to adapt. Sometimes um, we, we need more financial support than we are getting, but that's not the reason to throw in the towel. If you really want to do what you need to do, go for it, do it, sometimes on a smaller scale. And when you least expect it, support comes.
and I, I'm always ready to do the work that I'm doing and hope has always been my walking stick. Okay. Sister Lina, you sound so very energetic and very wise and practical advice there of how to approach uh, uh, the, world, the world of arts. What are you working on currently? You did mention that you're doing some literacy work and stuff like that. From a writing perspective, mm. are you working on some new poetry? Would you be able to share some of that with us currently? Okay, what is happening now, apart from uh, running the literacy campaign, Nozingwadi, Mother of Books, also the Namasigo, the Art and Heritage Trust, is the umbrella body that carries our annual festival, uh, which is a storytelling and book celebration festival, and it demands a lot of work and preparation. And also, one of the things that happen is that the extreme makeovers are really, really demanding physically, and uh, also in terms of uh, logistics and getting our volunteers on track. And writing, yes, I'm writing quite a bit of poetry and um, the, 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 um the, the, the piece that I'm working on at the moment, I'm hoping that it's going to grow and go to the place where I want it to go. And also working with music, we're going to be doing the CD of African Mother Christmas this year. So we are preparing to get that in place and um, the, the musicians that we're going to be working with and make sure that it's released by November. But before that, um, I am hoping that we're going to be able to launch my book, Stories of Africa, in Braille. It has been translated into Braille for people who, who are blind or partially sighted and I'm very proud of that. We need to care about um, the people who need to read these books and try and make more talking books in South Africa. I'm working towards that as well. Well, we wish you all the best with the next two few projects. You seem to keep you very busy and with that level of energy, I'm sure you'll be successful. And thank you once again, Sister Klina, for joining us uh, this morning. That's uh, Klina Mshope joining us live from our studios in Durban. Mklope is certainly giving credence to the claim that black don't crack. She's looking as lovely as ever. On a serious note, though, let me take you through the front pages of our morning papers. We'll start off with the Times and Future Shock is what they're leading with here. More than half of the pensioners cannot cover monthly costs, as according to a report. Work longer, spend less, and save more, or prepare for some tough golden years, or perhaps not so golden years, as according to the report. And then blood and peace, the situation in the Middle East is what's making headlines there. More coming up after the break. Stay with us.